Da, 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 da. Today is the 16th of March 2019. It is our final and day 30 of GHB Airfield Sailors. How nice and neat this is. This is Sally's bubble writing. Yes. And it's of quality and this is what we're going to be doing. After our 30 day marathon that we've now achieved, uh, we're going to be doing one maybe a week, one or two a week, and it's going to be a lot higher quality than we've done that. Yes, we have learned some of our craft, so keep watching. Yes. We'll be we'll be producing less frequently, but more quality. And more even more interesting than Even that. even yes. more even interesting. More interesting. So today we're going to be showing you a montage, we agreed before that that was a good word, yes. of um, our aviation backgrounds in pictures. Just showing you what got us into flying in the first place, why it's so fun, why we're so enthusiastic about Get High Valare, and finally where we are with Get High Valare today. Yes, we want to give young people of today the same experiences that we had when yes. we did it, and you'll see everything that we did in yeah. the past. Yeah, all better. Yes. Okay, now we're going to go back in time. Yes. This is Get High Valare. Yay! And you can see the photograph there. That's the three of us. I'm on the left, mm -hmm. and Tim is on the right, looking up, looking very cool he's in his cool, jacket. He? Yeah, well, he's, he tries to be cool. He tells us he's yes, cool. Yes, he tells us he's cool. He is really cool. Yeah, he is very cool. Yeah. And smiling in the front is Sally. Yay! And at the top is our logo with the baby aviator in the uh, jaws, or jaws? Jaws of the stalk. <laughs> <laughs> in the beak of the stalk. Perfect. Yes, with our Get High Valare, and Valare is the song Valare. Yes, the old song. Initially, I think I'm associating it with Dean Martin, but there yes. may have been other singers. Or other singers, but Dean, Dean yeah. Martin was the original. And we're not going to sing it, you'll yes. have to Google it. Absolutely, it's yes. It's a nice song. And to start with now, we're going to go back to the picture and Sally in the front. We're going to start with Sally, who's going to give you a comprehen comprehensive view of her mm. original aviation background. It's a race through, so hang yes. on to your seats and let's get going. Okay, what is it that got me to get off the ground in the first place? Well, it was this. My dad was in the parachute regiment after the war and my brother, one of my brothers, who's just a year older than me, joined the parachute regiment when he was 17 and I was 16. And I got it into my head as a little 16 year old girl, wouldn't it be funny if I jumped out of an aeroplane before he did because he had to go through ground school and then through the parachute regiment school. And so I did. And that's me approaching the ground. Landing, doing what I consider to be a perfect parachute landing fall and doing a pretty good job of gathering up my parachute and looking pretty happy. There I am, look, that's what a 16 year old me looks like. Hurrah! And that was my first aircraft. So it's true to say that the first aeroplane I ever went in, I jumped out of. I never landed. And that's the Piper Tripacer. This one, appropriately named G Leap, is, a, is an islander. And I started jumping out of islanders when I was at college and um, I was jumping out of Simpson Airfield in Peterborough. And one day, my brother came back and served one on me because having beaten him out of an aeroplane, he then beat me and came home with his private pilot's license. And I was gutted. And he'd learned on this aircraft, as well as a few other Cessnas, um, Golf Bravo, Alpha Bravo Charlie, which became a very common um, air aircraft that both of us flew. That was enormous fun. And I wasn't to be beaten. I then applied to the Air League and I got myself a flying scholarship. And from that, on, that time on, I really never jumped out of an aeroplane again because polling at the front was a lot more fun. I did most of my learning on this kind of an aircraft. This is a Robin, HR 200-100. That was enormous fun. A low wing monoplane. And then I ran out of money because I was still at college. And so I got a Saturday job and a Wednesday night job at McDonald's. And I still didn't have enough money. And so I applied to join the RAF a year early. And they gave me a bursary. And that enabled me to get my private pilot's license. And this is me a year later. I'm now a private pilot and I'm also um, an officer uh, in training in the Royal Air Force. And there I am graduating in the Royal Air Force. Hurrah for me. And then I became a fighter controller. So I started to control aircraft. And these are the kinds of aircrafts I control. The F-4 Phantom, ah, the Lightning. And there is a picture of the Lightning. And I was um, a fighter controller during the height of the Cold War. And so I used to launch the Quick Reaction Alert Force, the QRA, and there's a lightning uh, escorting out of our airspace a Russian Tupolev Bear bomber. I also controlled tornadoes. They came into service 
uh, whilst I was a fighter controller. That's an air defence variant. And at the same time, my brother, bless him, still going through the army, became a red devil. So he was still jumping out of the things, but also he was uh, flying them privately. After that, um, I then started flying them because the RAF, blow me down, decided to allow women to become military pilots. And that's me taxiing in after a flight in my little stubby-nosed JP Mark III. That's me because the press got involved. Uh, first and only and ever time I wore makeup whilst wearing a flying suit. <laughs> and then I graduated to the Mark V, uh, electronic electric cockpit. And that's my dog, Tess. Bless her cotton socks. Uh, I've got another photograph of her on the wing, but it's not reproduced here. Um, I continued through to fast jet flying training and I graduated to the Hawk. This is me and a Hawk. This is the aircraft I then took off next to. And this is a formation flight. I'll just show you a quick sequence. I was number three. Uh, in the formation. That's the lead. I'm just behind him. Uh, it's the guy behind me who's taking the, the pictures. I'm busy flying. Uh, and there we are in a right hand turn over the sea. That's the number two. And there we are in the left hand turn. There's the sky. And then we're recovering. I was at RAF Valley at the time on the Isle of Anglesey. That's us just coming back over the Menai Straits. There's the airfield. And we're turning round to shortly we'll put flaps and, and wings down. And so I managed to fly the Hawk well enough that they gave me my wings. And this is a Royal Naval ooh, Rear Admiral presenting me with my wings. And the press got involved again. And this is me after Valley. I was then uh, posted to RF Chibna in Devon to learn to fly the Hawk as a tactical weapons platform. That's a cool picture, isn't it? Advantages of being pestered by the, pe by the press. Uh, but that actually is about the last picture of me. Uh, flying the Hawk as a weapons platform because for reasons I won't go into now, it's part of a long talk, I transferred from fast jets to helicopters. But first I had a year of bliss flying chipmunks. There's a little cadet behind me there. <laughs> um, and I spent a whole year flying the chipmunk, having such a great time doing aerobatics and all sorts of funny manoeuvres with cadets in the back. And then I had my helicopter course and I graduated on the Gazelle. That's a really bizarre picture of me with my family. I have no idea why I look so self-conscious, but that's the only picture I have. And then I was posted back to RF Valley to um, fly the Wessex. Wonderful, wonderful helicopter, heavy lift, do all sorts of things like that. And then I left the RF because my biological clock had gone ding, ding, ding. And these are what I produced later. Three gorgeous children. In between then and now, I then also um, spent a stint at the BBC as a weather forecaster for the Met Office, qualified weather forecaster and presenter, and uh, I dress up well. It took me hours to look that pretty. And that brings me pretty much to the present day, because there was about a 25 year gap between my last flight and my most recent, and this is in Tim's aircraft, the AX2000 uh, Cyclone. And that was a matter of a couple of, couple of months ago, really. Um, and that pretty much, I think, brings me up to date where I now hand over to Julian, who you can see here as the cute little boy. And now he's going to tell us what brought him into aviation and to the present day. Off you go. No way near as illustrious as a uh, career in aviation as Sally's had there. And I probably don't look as cute to now than I did in that photograph. He does. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. <laughs> but uh, that's me sat on my father's lap in a, uh, uh, I think it's a uh, Ulster, or it might even be a Terrier, at Skegness Airfield. Now, my father was in the Royal Air Force. Uh, he spent his time on Valiants and then Vulcans as an air electronics officer. But also he was very keen on flying, even though he wasn't a pilot of these air, of the Valiant and the Vulcan. He became a PPL, so he did fly light aircraft. Uh, and, I, and he used to fly around more with me and my mum. At the time, my mum sat in the back there doing a knitting while I looked at it. That's so cool. <laughs> yes. Uh, so we used to fly all over the place. He's also got his gliding uh, pilot certificates and uh, instructor in gliders as well. So I started at a very early age, and that was one of the first uh, flights I had in a light aircraft. Uh, then we moved down to Cornwall, to RAF St Morgan. Uh, and near to RAF St Morgan was a little airfield on the cliffs called Perrinporth, which was the home of the Cornish Gliding Club. So again, I must have been about six or seven years old when I was uh, taken over there, and I used to go, almost every weekend we used to go gliding, and they took me along. And there were several families uh, from the Air Force as well who went at the same time. So we used to sit, sit in our cars and little trucks and things near the near the wrong way and help out with the launch point. And that's a K-13 K-13 taking off and it's a 
being towed into the air uh, on a winch launch, but it's not actually a winch, it's an auto tow. I don't think they do many of those these days, but if I remember rightly, the, uh, they used uh, old battered American Chevrolet trucks painted white and orange, dashed down the runway at high speed with the cable behind and launched. It didn't have to go too high because just to the right of that photograph of the cliffs. So you just need to get up to a few hundred feet, normally up to 700 feet, turn right and you're straight onto the, onto the cliff, onto the ridge lift on there. Uh, so I used to enjoy that, helping, helping out with that. I had my first flights there in K-13 and a Blarnik they had there at the same time. But also they had a tug aircraft. I think again that was a, an Oster or Terrier tug they had. And every now and again uh, when they did some tows they used to let us kids sit in one of the back seats because it was a it was a four seat version quite a powerful uh, version of it so uh, when when it went up uh, and towed the glider behind we would go in the back seats uh, turn around and make faces at the glider pilot on tow behind and normally they were again taken out up over the cliffs probably about 2,000 foot that time and release the glider and then they whoever was flying the the, the tug used to look, like to turn it almost inverted and pull back down so I remember look, looking up through the top of the of the glass because there's a glass uh, ceiling in the in the uh, terrier aircraft and seeing the cliffs above as we fell down through uh, with the rope snapping away behind it so that was really enjoyable times at, uh, at uh, Paramport. After that we moved uh, all the way around the place as you do as, as are in the RAF but we used to keep on coming back to, uh, to Norfolk uh, and Lincolnshire because my uh, mother's parents uh, live there uh, so my, my father also was a member of the Macaulay Flying Group at Little Snoring. Uh, Little Snoring, they had regular national aerobatic championships there, so I used to go along and help out with that. And this was the days even before the the pit special and the, the modern aerobatic team air, air, aircraft were were coming into uh, into use. So there were the Stomps there that were the best aircraft at the time, and uh, my father flew originally from there in the 50s with Barry Tempest. And uh, it was Elwood Macaulay, the, the, who the Macaulay Flying Group was named after, after his un unfortunate demise in a, in a flying accident. Mm. And then in the 1970s, 1978, uh, I was very lucky, I was a cadet, and in those days cadets did a lot of flying, because we had the old wooden gliders. Uh, so even the, almost all cadets flew once every few months, uh, sometimes even once a month. Uh, I was very lucky to get selected for a gliding course, so I went and did the gliding course that took us up to three solos uh, in the t Slingsby T31. Um, you can see the photograph there. Uh, this was at RAF Swanton Morley, 611 uh, Central Gliding School Squadron, uh, run by uh, Ron Page, squadron leader Ron Page. And uh, they used to have T31s were the main glider for the instructor and the cadets. They had a a uh, T20 one as well, known as the Barge, which is a side-by-side -side version. And when we landed after our winch launch, because they had winch launch here, for uh, Swatomol it was a huge grass airfield, I think the largest in Europe at the time. Uh, the winch launch is up, and we do a quick circuit and land every time. And when we land further away from the launch point, they had these bright yellow Land Rovers, short wheelbase Land Rovers, with trailers. So a Land Rover with a trailer would dash up to you, and cadets would jump out the back, grab hold of the glider, push it onto the trailer, lock it onto the trailer and then drive back at high speed to the launch point again for your next go around. And you had to do that quite quite quickly with the solo uh, solo, solo cadets as I was then uh, because all flying for everyone now stopped at that particular time so they didn't want to interrupt too much flying time so uh, I remember going back to the launch point really high speed having to push the stick forward to stop taking off on the back of the of the Land Rover. And that's actually me sat in there because I gave my camera to one of the other cadets, my little instamatic camera, so it's a bit blurry, but he snapped up a shot in there. So that's after my first solo flight going back to my, my second one. After three flights, that's it. You got your logbook signed up and then you, you finish the course. So, because my father was a glider pilot, I actually went on a bit further. But in between that, uh, I joined the Duxford Aviation Society. And I haven't really, I've got photographs, but I can't find them at the moment. I helped restore the Danair Avro York, which you can now see in one of the main, in the main hangar uh, in there. And it's right next to the aircraft you can see there, it's Concorde. Now I was there when Concorde uh, was delivered. The prototype Concorde was delivered and flown in by Brian Trubshaw. 
so I got quite close. I've got some even closer photographs somewhere. Again, I can't locate them at the moment. But this is after he'd landed. You know, he just managed to get Concorde in at Duxford because they were holding up the development of the M11 uh, because they cut the end of the runway off in order for the M11 to go through. And if they had if they hadn't got the Concorde in on that day, then it would have never got in because they'd have had to put the M11 through. But luckily he got it in just. So you can go and see that now and have a walk through. Sally and I were uh, walking through it and having a look at it uh, only a few weeks ago because it was the 50th anniversary of the first flight of Concorde and it was that actual aircraft that was flown. So I've got my little connections with Concorde there. But as I was saying, my father was a gliding instructor and during the period I was having my cadet uh, gliding course uh, I was also flying at Peterborough and Spalding Gliding Club at Crowland which is uh, just the other side of Peterborough in, in Lincolnshire and uh, that's a photograph of one of the competition days there and it's around about the same time must have been the 1970s again probably 77 78 79 something like that you can tell from the cars down there even the Lotus Europa down there so, uh, and the glider in the foreground is uh, with the white one with its uh, uh, air brakes open is the Pirat Polish glider and that's the, the final glider I did my solo flying on. Uh, I learnt on a two seat motion there uh, and this was after I, I did my solos uh, at with the RAF at the air training courts on Tamale. Came back and I carried on to get solo off Aeroto which I did fairly rapidly after that in a motion but the motion two seat gliders were considered quite an expensive bit of kit and they didn't really want to let people mess them up by sending them solo in that in case there was an accident or whatever so that I had my very first solo in a Skylark 2 completely different flight characteristics to the motion really quite twitchy um, particularly because it had a belly hook so it wants to uh, go directly upwards rather than follow the, uh, the the tow plane along so you had to push the stick forward I was very light at the time as well so uh, uh, that was great fun and my, my flight on that I was towed up because the uh, tug aircraft at Crowland was unavailable at the time so they put it, flew a new tug in from Swanton Morley and it was a Tiger Moth that they used to tow there so I had my first aero tow behind the Tiger Moth there so. and then I progressed on and uh, used to fly the Pirat and I did some solo aerobatics with that I used to love spinning it and looping it and doing all sorts of things with it but uh, I don't think you can do those now because it's getting old and there, there's uh, uh, corrosion things with it and so forth so. but that was great fun at, at Peter Spalding Gliding Club back in the 70s then I had to go away to college. Uh, I did uh, cartography and remote sensing, which is a, a bit of a satellite imagery and aerial photography. I was put in charge with the Seven Trent Water Authority of doing flood mapping. And originally they wanted to, us to take a whole year to do it uh, with teams of surveyors out in the field, uh, waist deep in cold water, muddy water, marking where flood waters had just been going into it, measuring it out and, and, and uh, with a, a level and plotting it back and plotting it on maps. And I suddenly thought, hang on, I've done this aerial survey and remote sensing and what I will do is I will use uh, a light aircraft to do it. And the cheapest light aircraft was a motor glider. And this is taking off from Marchington. And I had a camera with infrared, near infrared film, uh, took photographs of it and, and uh, it showed up so well it could easily plot it on the, uh, uh, on the actual maps. So that took about three months to do leaving us with nine months with not a lot to do so we carried on doing some flying at uh, Marchington where I used to glide as well as a gliding club there too. And then finally I was back down to uh, another job it took me down to uh, Maidenhead and I lived right on the on the uh, periphery of White Waltham Airfield uh, and a bit like Sunny with her chipmunks there was a chipmunk there uh, which a friend of mine used to fly so I used to get uh, flights in that and that's me just after a flight uh, over Reading where we did a bit of arrows and uh, uh, all sorts of different things with it. Lovely airplane to fly. And that is it. Grand. So that brings us to uh, the present day. So here we are once again at Crowland. Yes. Uh, just a few months ago where I did my first ever gliding trip and Julian um, re-engaged with gliding. I did. Um, and Sally there, is, uh, uh, Sally there is in it and then I Sally and myself are in it. This is November Charlie. This is the tug, one yeah, of the tugs. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a tug, yeah. It's a... It's a, uh, uh, a pawnee? No, no. It's, no, it's, it, it's a beagle husky. This is a beagle husky. Yeah, and it's a famous beagle husky, it's November lovely. Charlie, mm -hmm. uh, because it was the original beagle demonstrator. 
uh, back in the 60s and it's wow. got adverts of it in the old sailplane and gliding and aviation magazines Fantastic. and it's still working it's uh, uh, earning its keep today as a mm. gliding tug at, at Crowland. It's nice I would like to have a trip in that without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, oh okay and this is Julian in the same aircraft this is Tim's uh, cyclone the same day that uh, I got airborne in it as well uh, it was a real experience for me because up until that point I'd never been in an aircraft smaller than a Cessna or a Robin uh, and so I didn't I didn't realize microlights were real aircraft trust me I really didn't and this is just very very entertaining and interesting to fly yeah. um, we now have a bunch more aircraft nine, at the moment. nine aircraft yet. belonging to GHV which we haven't actually uh, trialed just yet but they are now available for us to start flying young people yes. 8 to 18 and this one looks quite similar to the yeah, cyclone it is, yes. but it isn't it's, uh, it's an X air something or other yes. we'll give you more details another time this one looks really cute as well yeah. we've got this aircraft any idea what this is Julie? Buc Buccaneer this is a Buccaneer yeah, it's a, uh, amphibian wow yeah. that's a uh, Bizarre. Yeah, and we've, we've got a bit, little strip of uh, water drained by a side of our airfield. We might be able to use that. We, we, we've yet to find out. So we can take this yes. on land and on water. Yes. Oh, I can't wait. Fantastic. This is bizarre yeah, in it, spades. Yes. This is the original uh, microlite type, uh, the flex wing that they're called. Right. Uh, uh, one of the lightest types you can fly around. Uh, very interesting. But a bit open though. I, I, I tend to for the three axes, but mm -hmm. I get to fly in one of those types. But well, I have so yet to. Have a go. Yeah, I like to have yeah. a go, and yeah. uh, I bet there's a fair few other youngsters oh, who yes. like to have a go in this yes. as well. And that, here's a, another. That's a CFM Shadow. Okay. Uh, that's one of the early microlight types. Again, it's a two seat. You can get just about get in the back there, oh, but you yeah. need to small. Right. But uh, I remember those back in the I think back in, back in the eighties when uh, they had mm. one at Bentham. And this is one that's been pushed along. The yep. propeller is behind, and up. I think. Oh, that's that's we're now into a, that's an avid flyer. a tail dragger, an yep. avid flyer. This yep. looks nice. Yeah, lovely little airplane that is. And uh, yeah. once uh, Tim's got that uh, sorted out, flying again, I'd love to have a flight on that one. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. And a little glider, a, a BJAV. It's a French glider, two seat glider. Oh yes. And we have one of those as well. So if we can get uh, an aircraft with a hook on the back at uh, our yeah. airfield at Marshall, then we might be able to tell us. So yeah, and the runway is long enough. Oh, certainly long enough. So, yeah. yep, all, all yep. good and hopeful. And finally, last but not yes. least, because there'll be more to come, yes. just the other day, Julian was present with the sighting of our new clubhouse. Yes, which mm. is quite luxurious if you look at it there. So we've yet to do the interior. Even the interior's got, it's got plush sofas and plush carpet and shower mm. rooms and kitchens and everything else. So, uh, so we're going to kit that yeah. out. Visiting, visiting our aviators to our airfield, which is at minus six feet, at the lowest airfield in Britain. Yes. So uh, once we've got that out, we'll probably have uh, uh, a fly-in, so people can fly in and, and come and meet us yep. at the uh, at the uh, at our lovely yep. new clubhouse. Tea and sandwiches and cake. Yes. Yes. That's Completely good. brilliant. So I hope you've enjoyed our Potter's history of uh, Get High Valare uh, as it is to date, and what it is that got Julian and myself to get behind this project because it's so much fun. And again, Tim has his own story, which we will introduce over the fullness of time. Um, and what we're after are other people who are as enthusiastic uh, around the whole business of aviation as we are. Whether you want to fly, whether you want to get behind the scenes and help others to fly, uh, whether you want to be creative around flying or supportive, then get in touch because this is taking off. Absolutely.